Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It's been a quiet start to the weekend so far, but things will be changing as we head towards Sunday. Rain showers will be moving back into the picture, and if you're looking to do some traveling across the country after the long Thanksgiving weekend, you may run into a few headaches. Earlier today, we've already seen some of those headaches. This storm system that's moving across central portions of the country was causing delays around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You can see most of that rain now has moved on into portions of Missouri and portions of Kansas, but there's another stretch of showers and storms that are working their way through the deep south, heading through Alabama over toward Georgia at this time, and these will continue to cause a few headaches as we head into that last travel day of the weekend tomorrow. So be prepared for the possibility of at least a few delays. In fact, the forecast here through tonight shows that rain moving toward Atlanta. If you're looking to fly in and out of Atlanta early in the morning or toward DC, you're going to be seeing some shower activity around the same across most of the Midwest, Missouri, all the way through Ohio into most of uh, southern Michigan as well. Also going to be dealing with the rain showers. These keep pushing off toward the east coast as we head into the afternoon. So if you're traveling out of one of those east coast airports, again, DC and New York on up into uh, portions of, say, uh, Philadelphia, you could be dealing with some of those impacts from the showers. The same here across Michigan, seeing a lot of rain out there. And also if you're heading back out toward the West places like Seattle dealing with some showers, some snow into portions of western Montana toward Billings. This pattern continues as we head into the evening hours of Sunday and toward midnight with more snow across the uh, uh, northern Pacific uh, Northwest regions. And then we're going to see again the rain start to push out of New York, DC looking better by the evening. But if you're heading on up toward the far northeast, that's where you could see more showers continuing. But for the most part, nothing too crazy out there, but there may be some weather delays as we head toward tomorrow. Back here in Michigan, though, it was a beautiful day out there. Martha sent this picture in from Montague where you saw a beautiful sun dog in the clouds here this afternoon. Thanks for sending that photo our way and another beautiful view this evening from the Lakeshore Grand Haven. Kale sent us this picture of a few clouds in a beautiful sunset. Of course, we always love to share your photos here at 13 on your side. You can send them to me on social media. Meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on Twitter and on Instagram. When it came to the temperatures on this Saturday, it was a nice and mild day out there well above average 54 degrees in Grand Rapids 55 in Kalamazoo suspect that temperature sensor in Battle Creek is malfunctioning because it is still very warm at this hour don't think they made 67 today but it was above average no matter where you went the forecast though was inside our three degree guarantee we told you 53 hit 54 today start uh, hopefully our next streak of three degree accuracy tomorrow expected to be cooler than today that's why 13 weather ball is lit up in blue that weather ball also also blinking bright because rain and snow chances are in sight. View the 13 weather ball sponsored by Tullymore Golf Resort. We're looking at temperatures again at this hour that are starting to cool off. We're down to 38 in Grand Rapids, 43 in Ionia, 48 in Muskegon. Again, you can see that suspect reading out of Battle Creek, too warm for the surrounding areas, 42 in Kalamazoo. We'll see a little bit of a wind chill tonight, but the winds won't be too bad through the overnight hours, so they will pick up some as we head toward tomorrow. That'll be coming with the rain chances that start about sunrise tomorrow and continue into the afternoon. Temperatures only going to be held into the low 40s as a result of this rain, so don't expect a day like we had today. In fact, don't expect that for the start of the week either. Tonight, we'll see temperatures that fall to 35 as clouds increase, but tomorrow again with those showers we will only reach 41 by the afternoon. On the back end of that rain as we head into the afternoon, you may see an isolated area of some wintry mix, maybe some snowflakes, but it's not going to be anything that impacts travel or sticks anywhere across the region. Monday will be mostly cloudy and seasonable with a temperature around 41. Here's that radar again as we headed through about 930 where you could see the clouds already starting to pick up in West Michigan and the rain off to the south that is heading our way. Hour by hour forecast as we head into early Sunday shows that rain activity pushing toward us as we head toward that seven and eight o'clock hour. Rain will start to fall here in Grand Rapids with showers across the region throughout the morning and into the afternoon. Heaviest showers do look to be on the southern end of the viewing area, so 94 corridor, but all of us will have a chance for rain before the day is done. You can see that mix sort of coming in as we head into the afternoon with the winds taking on that northerly component. The precipitation mostly gone as we head into Sunday night, but a flurry or a sprinkle may still be possible. That kind of holds true for the lakeshore as we head into Monday, but most all of us will be dry, just mostly cloudy as we go through the day on Monday. We'll keep the clouds around as we head toward Monday night. In fact, increasing again as we go into the day on Tuesday, a mostly cloudy day Tuesday. A lot of dry weather during the day, but as we head into Tuesday evening, that's when our 
Next rainmaker shows up. We see rain shower activity increasing as we head into Tuesday evening with showers likely for most everyone as we head through the overnight hours Tuesday into early Wednesday going into the day Wednesday that starts to mix with a little rain, a little snow out there again. Accumulations at this point not expected to be too major. Again, that mixing potential is more likely. We push this out of here as we head into the day Thursday, but we do have some more precipitation chances toward the end of the forecast. Here's a look at temperatures for the overnight hours out there will be in the 30s across the lakeshore, upper 30s for Muskegon. Those temperatures a little bit cooler for inland areas, low to mid 30s for our northern zones with temperatures very similar from Grand Rapids to Kalamazoo. Look for a low around 35 by sunrise on Sunday. Sunday afternoon, we'll see those temperatures push up into the 40s, much cooler than today, but pretty seasonable for this time of the year. Low 40s across the lakeshore, more low 40s for our northern zones with those showers around. We'll see temperatures around 41 from Grand Rapids all the way down through Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures stay in the 40s as we head through the start of the week, but we rise temperatures all day long on Tuesday. In fact, that high temperature going to come in close to midnight. Temperatures stay warm overnight until Wednesday morning when we start to see that mixing come in as temperatures fall. We'll start the day in the low 50s. We'll end the day in the 30s. Our temperatures stay cooler as we head toward the end of the week, but we do warm back up toward next weekend. That is, of course, before another round of rain and eventually snow comes in to end the 10 day forecast. Now that Thanksgiving is over, it's all eyes on Christmas. And even though most of our early snowfall is gone, the light displays are starting to return to West Michigan. 13 on your sides, Nate Belt takes us to one display in Walker. All it takes is one look at Mitchell Sheckle's house to know he's a big fan of the holidays. I love Christmas, drove around the neighborhoods looking at light shows with the kids and saw something similar and I was like, I can do that. His light show on Bristolwood Drive and Walker began in 2019, much smaller than it is today. And then I added some to the windows, and then I got a little smarter and put the color changing RGBs in here. Um, just kind of got a little bit more advanced every year. Now he has close to 8,000 individual lights. Visitors pull up, tune their radio to 90.1 FM, and enjoy a 15 minute show with lights blinking along to a mixture of classic Christmas songs and today's pop hits. We'll get an average 30 cars or so a day that'll kind of come through. Shekel's biggest goal is to share his love of Christmas with everyone who stops by. Hopefully other people get a really good kick out of it and bring some Christmas spirit to the, you know, to the next generation. Shows happen each Thursday through Sunday from 6 to 10 p.m. from now through Christmas, including every day the week of the holiday. In Walker, Nate Belt, 13 on your side. While the lights are popping up around West Michigan, you may want to use this as a reminder to get your Christmas tree early. If you're after that real tree experience, trees are reported to be in short supply around the nation. Barrett Peterson from ABC affiliate WSB in Georgia has this report. Oh, I like that. Yes. Regina and Dennis Pruitt usually wait until after Thanksgiving. We've usually done it the week after, but um, this year, who knows, we might get this one up today. Might be a good plan. I don't have the quantity I need, but I have a good selection for right now. Kathy Cooper runs Cooper's Tree Farm in Hall County. There's the logo. They grow them, yeah. cut them. Hey. And every holiday season, they truck in a semi load of Fraser furs from North Carolina. But for several years now, there has been a shortage. Carolina growers have been selling off their land. The real estate in the mountains is in high demand. The ones still in the business can't get enough help to replant seedlings every year. And inflation has driven up the costs. Kathy says each and every tree on the truck was at least an extra four bucks. This year I had one variety of size that was $11 more, more than last year. And she can't sell all the trees she grows. If she did, there'd be none left for next year. Kathy says the 2,500 they have won't last long. Regina and Dennis Pruitt are taking one home. We haven't had one in a while, so we thought we might just go back and see, <laughs> see if we like it, how much of a mess it might be. <laughs> 
And as we're heading into the holiday season, you may be wanting to send a gift to friends or family that are a few states away. Well, the first set of deadlines for getting those orders in is closer than you might think. Ground shipping is generally the cheapest option, but you'll need to wrap things up by mid-December. FedEx's last day for ground delivery before Christmas is Wednesday, December 14th. For the U.S. Postal Service, that deadline is Saturday, December 17th. Different deadlines will apply if you're mailing packages out of the country or to Alaska or Hawaii. So make sure you check the carrier's website for that information. UPS recommends getting an estimate from its website, which calculates delivery dates for its different services. Another option is ordering gifts online and sending them directly to the recipient's address. And while we're thinking about gifts, it's also important this time of the year to remember to donate, if you can, to Toys for Tots. The organization needs your help as donations are down about 70%. You can donate any new unwrapped toys at the drop-off locations that are around town, including here at the 13 on Your Side studios. There's also a list of those drop-off locations at 13onyourside.com. And now that you're caught up on the latest weather and Christmas as we got past the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, you can always find more news and weather information online at 13onyourside.com or by downloading the 13 on Your Side news and weather apps. But for now, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.